Consistency is king. Oh my god! Oh. What was that? Hello everyone, I've been aim coaching people for a living for about more than a year. I mechanically trained people who won international siege tournaments, Valorant tourney winners, ex-professional Halo players, Overwatch contender DPS players, ECA main plus, blah blah blah, so on and so forth. You get the idea, right? It doesn't matter if you pop off one damn moment of the entire goddamn game. What matters is if you can do that fucking sh** every goddamn round in order for you to get out of elo hell you must consistently could sit my ass cheeks you, you must consistently do well every game but how do you do that how how do you do that I don't know. This is a, I'm. This is not a tutorial. I'm asking for help. All jokes aside, in this video, I'll be showing you how to make yourself a more consistent player. I'll first show you why you do great on some days versus other days, which may or may not entail an overly sized explanation and what you can do to train it for yourself mechanically as well. Also, if you like these meme educational videos on helping you out on getting that elo clout, leave a thumbs up. Helps me figure out if you guys like this content or not. All right, so what gives you consistency? Oh shit! It's a fucking whiteboard. Watch out. Basically, let me just make. All right, I need to blow this fan somewhere else that is not at my crotch. Let's say that when you first start out in a very generic round, you have three opportunities to get a kill. So let's say that. In this world, you perfectly identify which opportunities will give you this rate of success. You have an 83% success rate for this opportunity for a play. Let's say in this instance, Viper has smoked off a one way and you angled yourself for a solo fight against her in U-Haul, knowing it's only one guy and the fact that your teammates are behind you to shoot him as well. So then surviving that opportunity brings you to this next fight where you identify that you have the opportunity to peek the entire team as a jet to chance a free kill using your dash to run away after one successful pick. And for this 80%, it doesn't really matter. The reason why these are labeled as a success rate is because anyone can kill anyone. It really just depends on the chance of it. Even the best players in the world can get killed by iron players. And these opportunities occur throughout the around a lot of people are playing this game at a context of mechanical gameplay meaning that you take every fight you can possibly get into no matter how difficult it is so you would take the first fight win that fight go for the second fight lose and not be alive to take the third fight meaning that you only get one kill you chance literally every fight you can get which is why some days are just slapping ass right but even though you're doing the exact same thing the next day you start to eat because again you're forcing yourself to hit through every single opportunity no matter how low it is there's a reason why that reina keeps peeking out of bathroom because essentially he's trying to gamble for a really sick clip even though peeking out of bathroom when you don't know there's multiple people or only one person you still do it anyways because you just gamble for the chance of success however with more knowledge in the game you can either raise your percentages on the chance of winning an aim battle your aim also increases this chance or just ignore the hard fights entirely i f in with that circle i didn't know i could do that but i just did. Although we have many nutty aimers who aim for increasing the percentage of success, the best of the best know the balance of both aim and their game sense will keep a high win percentage for some of these fights while avoiding the fights that have a low success rate, allowing them to take on more fights in the future. That's why a lot of players who have really good aim could actually fail at performing well in pro play because they will almost always take that second fight. And when you're taking a fight with a low success rate, you have a low chance of staying alive to give more impact into the round. This is not to say you should bait don't f***ing bait. And you, I know you're f***ing baiting. Don't f***ing 
bullshit on me. I know you're goddamn baiting. And the reason why a lot of people bait in Valorant, they want to avoid the chances of any of these fights, but towards the end of the round, after all of your teammates are dead, with, mind you, no assistance from you since you are in a position of baiting, now you don't have to go through these three fights. Now you have to do all five because in order for you to win this round, you have to kill everyone in a clutch that gives you a low success rate of winning the round. And because you're the only one left alive, you're going to be the only one that the enemy are going to be peeking. So therefore, you're probably going to kill more people, but you have to kill everyone to win the round anyways. But because these are f***ing stat monkeys, they goddamn see their kills are high, so it's like, oh, it's okay, I'll just keep content. No! It's not okay! It's not f***ing okay! So... Mechanically speaking, how do you play more consistent? Remember my talk about opportunities to get the successful pick? What good mechanics influence is the rates of success. Although, yes, game sense is very important, but it doesn't really matter jack sh if you can't aim for sh A lot of successful smart plays cannot become a reality if that girl or guy cannot hit those shots. Every day, you wake up with a different reaction time, different sense of how you're gonna hit your shots. It all depends on how well you slept, if you got the right amount of caffeine, if you got yourself medicated. There's a lot of factors that play into it, right? Every day you have a different various levels of success in a given action. So for example, one day you would be 50% likely to get this successful pick. The day afterwards could be 66%. The day after that could be 40%. That's why when it comes to actually taking care of your health, you could perform better because you can allow yourself to be more consistent on a physical level. You may sleep better at night, you may wake up more alert after eating a healthy diet. The most important factor of gaining consistency is try to incorporate a routine that has proven to work for you. A routine or a warm-up in this regard allows for individuals to secure a minimum percentage chance of winning a pick in an opportunity. In other words, let's say you want to have a consistent 75% chance of your aim allowing you to win this peak. You could wake up really shitty and have a 50% chance in your aim, or wake up very well and have a 90% chance in your aim. But with a well-made, proven warm-up routine for yourself, you could secure a minimum 75% chance in your aim because the routine would allow you to make sure you have reviewed the mechanics needed to succeed in this aim battle. By doing your proper routine, you can secure the minimum success rate by making sure you have neurologically reviewed the mechanical skills needed to deliver your impact, instead of relying if you woke up on the right side of the bed or not. In other words, it's like buckling your seatbelt. You are securing your minimum success rate for staying alive, instead of relying on the chance of Brad does happen to want to drive on the f***ing road like a drunk Brad he is. So it's very important that you try to pick out routines that are very close to the mechanics as you're playing in the game so if you're trying to climb on overwatch which by the way no judgment i don't know why the f would you ever go through that mental hell let's say that you typically main soldier and tracer very heavy tracing based type characters you want to find a routine that's more centered upon tracking rather than you know flicking because essentially if you do any other practice that is not really applicable to the game that you're trying to play you basically kind of just didn't even touch your percentages at all so if you're playing a game like valorant or cs that has a lot of micro corrections try to play a lot of tasks that involve micro corrections stay away from doing large flicking tasks because to be quite honest you're not going to be doing that often all right thank you guys so much for for watching through this video i would greatly appreciate if you can leave a thumbs up and let me know what you guys want me to make a video about in the future this is your friendly maybe toxic neighborhood aim coach titanos signing off